welcome to the Not So Traveling Introvert. Today I want to talk about showing self-compassion. This is something I talked about in a recent leadership roundtable um, along the lines of we were talking about New Year's resolutions and all that sort of stuff. But one of my main points was everyone's going through something, whether you know it or not, and we need to learn to be more compassionate to ourselves, not just from a point of our expectations, but also from being kind to ourselves and to others. And so most of us at some point or time in our lives probably have a habit of beating ourselves up. I don't mean physically, but mentally, you know, and when you do that, you are lacking self-compassion. The truth is you wouldn't say the words that you say to yourself to somebody you care about. And you shouldn't let your inner critic or voice say that to you either. Instead, you should work towards developing sort of acceptance of yourself and others. Some people even give their self-critic a name so that then they can say, hey, I know Beatrice, uh, thank you for your talk. And I understand that you are trying to help me, but I got this because it helps them to mentally imagine a different human or non-human and helps them talk it through and talk it out. So one of the ways that you can start to develop self-compassion is to avoid negative self-talk. Don't allow yourself to speak negatively. And when I say speak, it, it could be verbally or internally about yourself. It's okay to accept responsibility, which is quite different from derogative statements. Like I messed up because I didn't look both ways is an acceptance of a mistake. However, I am stupid for not looking both ways. It's not an acceptable way to talk to anybody, let alone yourself. Start practicing self-kindness. Instead of telling yourself to just quit a job, turn the tables and give yourself the same encouraging advice you would give a friend or family member. How would you walk them through the steps to quitting the job? Or the, view the pros and cons. Do something nice for yourself as if you were your own friend, because in reality, you are your own best friend and your own worst enemy. So, you know, try and kick that enemy to the curb. And this one is so rife right now is, well, I say right now, in general, stop comparing yourself to other people. Everyone has different abilities and positives and negatives about themselves. Everyone has their own life experience and lives in their own bubble and everyone is in their own stage of their journey. So stop focusing on what other people are doing and just live your life and be present and enjoy what you have. Recognize learning abilities, opportunities. Every single surprising result, event or situation is an opportunity to learn something new. It's not time to think negatively or to place blame. Some of the best products and inventions were brought to light because something unexpected happened. Penicillin, potato chips, silly putty, etc. They're all due to unexpected results and people learning from them. So keep trying and keep learning. Um... And the other thing I would mention is, do you have a personal development budget set aside for yourself? When you're doing your budgeting at the month, the end of the month or the year or the week or what have you, do you have a little bit of money set aside that you can put into your own personal development? And it doesn't have to be professional development. It could be, hey, I'm going to put 10 bucks aside so I can buy a coloring book. Do you have that? And the other thing is when you're thinking about self-compassion, you can get help from a professional. If you're having difficulty being kind and compassionate to yourself, you may need to consider getting help from a professional therapist or counsellor. Many people suffer from imposter syndrome and that can really affect the ability to be kind to yourself. So seek help can definitely help with that. And last but not least, be patient. Anytime you want to make a change, remember it's not going to happen overnight. Don't set yourself up for failure by by expecting it to change overnight. Instead, craft a plan that will enable you to tackle your self-compassion issues over time and deal with one thing and then move on and deal with something else. Cultivating self-compassion takes time. And, you know, if you're not accustomed to thinking that way, 
you may need to work with a supportive, qualified person to help you through or just have an outside um, accountability to help you feel that self-care and to self-love. Thank you for listening. This is Janice at thecareerintrovert.com helping you build your brand and get hired. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.